God is so good. He is so good to us. We're not worthy of what he's done for us, but we, we receive it. We accept it. That Jesus, the Son of the living God, came across time and eternity to culminate a plan, and we are a part of his family by the new birth. Hallelujah. We've been born in this family. We just thank God for his blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon every person. Lord, we do love you. And thank you for what you've done for us. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's only fitting that today we talk about the most important mother of all, the mother of Jesus. You know, Mary was the mother of Jesus and... Uh, Normally in uh, the book of Luke, we read the Christmas story. But this, uh, this story, uh, it, it's the beginning of something that's very special. And if you have your Bibles, you can follow along with us in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Nazareth, called, a city of Galilee called Nazareth. Notice this, this angel was sent by God on assignment to a virgin, a spouse, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Bless thou, thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast her to mind what manner of salutation or greeting this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou hast, shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus, and shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give him unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Bid unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, that you came to redeem us. Lord God, that you live. The Bible says you were tempted in all points as we were. That you, you know the human experience. You know our frailties, our weaknesses, Lord. And we thank you that you've experienced all that without sin. That you, you died in our, our place. That you took upon yourself the curse that we might be redeemed from the curse. Lord, we can never thank you enough for what you've done for us. And we rejoice. We know that soon and very soon, Lord, you're coming for your body. Those that have died in Christ will be raised first. And when we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up to be in your presence. Lord, soon and very soon that's happening. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we need to put this uh, story into perspective. You know, we, we read this story and, and uh, in some ways it seems a little out of place because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John write the Gospels and they write it from a different viewpoint of the life of Jesus. But it has its beginning uh, long before Mary and Joseph and, and Jesus is born. It starts about 4,000 years. The 4,000 years have passed since Adam sinned. Now to us, that's a long time, but to God who sets out of time, it's not very long. And, uh, you know, about 1,500 years after the sin of Adam is the flood of Noah. 1,500 years, that's a long time to us. You know, uh, Sister Carper is almost 101, but uh, multiply that 15 times, that, that, you're getting up there, amen. And, uh, you know, there, there are people that we've known that uh, maybe went to school with that they, they have passed from this life. 
You know, today is a sad uh, occasion because uh, Angel's grandmother passed away early this morning. Well, she wouldn't come back because she's promoted to heaven. But, you know, we all have an appointment with death. And uh, we'll either we're going to be caught out by the rapture or we're, we're going to pass from this life. So 1,500 years have passed and the flood of Noah comes and there's only eight people uh, that are on the planet Earth. And uh, 500 years later, 500 years passes before God chooses a man by um, um, Abram and he makes a covenant with him and he changes his name to Abraham. And God makes a covenant with him. Now, it's 2,000 years from the sin of Adam to Abraham. 2,000 years. It's 2,000 years from Abraham to the birth of Jesus Christ. And it will be 2,000 years uh, when the Lord comes back. 6,000 years. That's the, that's the land lease that man has on the earth. And at some point in time, it's going to end. I would say, well, it's already been 2,000 years. Well, uh, as I've said before, you, you, you know, a football game is supposed to be played in an hour. But they have injuries, they take timeouts, and uh, teams have timeouts, and referees have timeouts. And you've never seen a game played in an hour. You know, I've, I've seen the first uh, half go in about 30 minutes. You think, man, this thing will be over. The second half always takes longer because they, they, everybody wants to win. Well, we're winners, and uh, we're winners in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, so Abraham, God makes a covenant with Abraham, and later on, the descendants of Abraham become the slaves in Egypt, and they're slaves for 400 years. And God sends Moses to deliver them. And he wants to give them the promised land, but they wander in the wilderness for 40 years. 440 years. That's a long time. And, and uh, then the children of Israel, when they come into their kingdom, they select a king. You know, they want a king, they want a king, they want a king. So God says, okay, you can have a king. So they select one. They select Saul. Well, Saul looked like a king. He was taller, physically well-built. They thought, well, he's the guy that should be a king. But, you know, he wasn't obedient to the Lord. God told him to do something. He had disobeyed God. You know, when we're disobedient, we have a place of repentance. And, uh, but there was no place of repentance for him. And God stripped him of his kingdom. And God chose a king. Now, you know, if we were choosing a king, we would select somebody that's tall and intelligent. And, but... but God looks at things differently. You know, we look on the outward stature. We look at the physical appearance of persons. And uh, we, we make our choice by that. And uh, Brother Mark, a couple of weeks ago, told about how he was the last to, you know, to be picked. And it wasn't because he wasn't a good-looking guy. It's just because he wasn't very athletic or they didn't think he was. And, uh, you know, it, it is that if we had chose, we would have chose the wrong person. But God looks on the heart. God knows, you know, the Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. In fact, in the book of Genesis, it tells us that God declares the end from the beginning. Every, everything in Genesis is a, is a roadmap we can use. And, and so it is that, that God chooses David. Now, he tells Samuel, when you go in, don't, I'm not looking at the countenance, and I'm not looking at how good looking they are, how smart they are. And, and so Samuel, you know, he would anoint uh, the whole horn of oil over the, the, the sun and said, no, nah, it's not him. And so he goes through all the sons, you know the story, and he says, uh, you sent me here, Lord, to anoint somebody. Now, who is it? And, and so he asked Jesse, do you have any more sons? He said, well, yes, yeah, there's a son out there taking care of the sheep. Now, I want to tell you, in ancient times, it was not the job of a son to take care of sheep. So they didn't think much of David. You know, David was out tending the sheep. And he said, send for him. When he comes in, God says, that's him. That's the one that's anointed king. 
and, and he anoints him to be the king of Israel. Now, we would have never chose David, but God chose him. And, you know, did God knew, do, know everything he would do? Yes, good and bad. But God said he's got a good heart. He has a repentant heart. He's a guy that I can use. He will do what I ask him to do. And so God chose David. In fact, he tells David, of, of your kingdom, there'll be no end. And uh, he, he, he reiterates that when he tells Mary that the kingdom of the Lord, will there'll be no end to it. We're a part of the kingdom of God right now. You're a part of the kingdom of God. And uh, we, are, we have access to the name. We're authorized to use the name of Jesus. And, and, and Jesus said, in my name, you, you, will, you will speak with new tongues. You will cast out demons. You'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That, that's what we're authorized to do in the name of Jesus. And, and so it is that after uh, the, uh, the, the flood of Noah, there's about uh, oh, 400 years. That's, that's silent. You know, the last book, God talks about how that they had robbed him of the uh, uh, of uh, tithes and offering in the book of Malachi. And, you know, he said, if you'll honor me, I'll, I'll, I'll bless what you put your hand to. And then there's 400 years of silence. God doesn't speak. God doesn't move. There's no great prophets of God. And so, in God sends Gabriel. First of all, he sends him to the temple to talk to Zechariah. Now, Zechariah and his wife had had they had tried to have kids for years, and uh, she's an older lady. She's probably past the age of, 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 of conceiving a child. And uh, the angel announces to him, you, you are going, your wife is going to conceive a child in her old age. And he begins to question God. How, how can this be? And uh, in order to protect the miracle, God says, to him, or the angel says, you'll, you'll be mute until the day is born, and, and his name will be John. And we know the story how that when uh, uh, the baby was born, they wanted to name him Zachariah. He said, give me something to write. His name is John, and his tongue was slick. You know, it, it lets us know that our, our tongue is critical in, in, in the miraculous things of God. You know, when Jesus encountered Jairus and the, and the servants came and said don't trouble the master any further because your daughter is dead Jesus said hold on to your faith and don't say anything don't, don't say what you want to say you know it's easy sometimes for us to express our emotions but uh, it is that we need to hold fast to the promise of God because with God there's nothing that's impossible and so it is that Mary could have never imagined the plan of God. And you wouldn't have either. You know, Nazareth is one of the lowest places on the planet. In fact, years later, Nathaniel tells Philip, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Because it's low. And so he has an opinion that everybody that, that lives there is low. They're, they're a second-rate citizen. You know, God, God doesn't choose like we choose. You know, if I was God, I wouldn't have chose me to do this job, but God chose me. And, and God chooses you. So there's, there's something that we need to learn from, from the, the lesson that Mary... It's number one, you need to be used by God. You need to be prepared for God will use you. And, and, and sometimes it's when not you're, you're not ready to be used. You know, you may be at a gas station and an opportunity arises for you to tell somebody uh, about what God's done for you. Or, or you may make a hospital visit and the Lord prompts you to pray for that person for their healing and deliverance. So, you know, you always need to be used by God. Now, you know, Mary is probably 15 or 16 years old. I vaguely can remember being 15 or 16. Some of you can too. You know, uh, we weren't uh, that mature at 15. 
I certainly wasn't prepared to be married. But in, in, those, in that day and time, you know, a lot of people died of diseases, so they got married very young. And I'm, I'm sure Joseph was probably 18, 19. And so she's engaged to Joseph. And uh, God knows that. You know, God knows everything about you. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows everything about you, and He knows about that. And, and so it is that, that uh, as the angel comes in and, and greets her, well, how did she know it was an angel? Ever wonder what? How did she know it was an angel? Not just some stranger. There, there's a divine presence of God. She recognizes this is not just a person. This is an angel from God sent to me. Why, why did he come to me? And, and, uh, and, and he says to her, you are blessed among women. In other words, God has a special assignment for you. And, and uh, you know, she's trying to figure out who this person is and what he's saying because he says to her, you're going to conceive a child and uh, he is going to be the savior of his people. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. And he's going to inherit the throne of his father, David. And uh, he, he is going to, you know, he's going to rule and reign and bless all people. And she's trying to take that all in, you know. You ever have somebody tell you something and you say, back that up a little bit. I, what, what did you say to me? And so she's startled, she's amazed at what he's saying to her. But she, she doesn't refuse what he's saying. Now, whether she understands the full consequences of what's about to happen in her life, what's about to change in her life, but she said, according to your word, be it unto me. In other words, she is a usable person. We have to be usable in the hands of the Lord because God will ask us sometimes to do things that, that, that are hard and impossible. You know, God, God may ask you, uh, you know, financially. He has with my wife and I before to, to, to go to the last we have to bless somebody else. That's, you know, long before I came to this church. We were sitting in the service and God asked us, you know, and, and I said, Lord, you better talk to her. I was thinking that. And, and my wife says, the Lord said, we need to give this amount. And that really was all we had at the moment. And we gave that amount. And the Lord told me, he said, don't put it in the offering. I said, don't put it in the offering. He said, give it to the person. And we gave it to the minister. And he said, oh, what a blessing. He said, they've been taking my offering. They're not going to give me anything. They're not going to give me gas fare to get out of town. But still, yet he was still faithful to minister the word and be used of the Holy Spirit in spite of what people were doing. So, you know, sometimes, you know, people are not faithful. Well, what if we hadn't done what God said? Well, God would have picked somebody else. What if Mary said, nah, I don't want any part of that. But God knew her heart. God knew that she would accept the assignment. And so she goes, you know, in the, the Bible, she, she leaves with haste and she goes to Judah to visit her cousin Elizabeth and see what's going on with her. Well, she's trying to check it out. She's trying to see, well, is she really, the, the angel said she's, got a, she's with a child. Let me go check that out for myself because I, I, I really don't know if, if this is so. And when she finds Elizabeth, she's been uh, expecting a baby for six months. She's well alone. So she realizes that everything that, that this angel has told me is going to come to pass. And while she's there, the Holy Spirit overshadows her, and God causes her to become pregnant with a son. Now, after three months, she returns to Nazareth, but she's got to tell Joseph, I'm pregnant. Like they used to say on Lucy, Lucy, you've got some explaining to do. You know, because she's been gone for three months. Now, Joseph knows it's not his child. And, uh, you know, he, she said, uh, you're not going to believe this. And while he probably found it hard to believe that, that she was 
expected by, the, by God that the Holy Spirit had overshadowed her. And so Joseph, you know, Joseph loved Mary. And uh, he's trying to figure out how he can put her away. You know, uh, in Matthew chapter 1, it says this, that, that he, he is a, he's a just man, honest man, and he's trying to, you know, protect his reputation because uh, he doesn't want anybody thinking, well, he's fooled around with Mary and she ran off. And, and so he's trying to figure out how he can put her away properly. He doesn't want to embarrass her anymore. She's pregnant out of wedlock. That, that's enough for, for anybody to suffer. And, and so he's trying to figure out, how, how can I do it? And uh, he he's puts real thought in that because he doesn't want to embarrass. You know, he wants to protect his integrity, but he doesn't want to embarrass Mary. And in the dream, the, the, the Lord sends an angel in his dream and it said, don't, don't be fearful to take Mary as your wife because that thing is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And, and, he, and he tells him that, that uh, you know, basically the same message that he gives to Mary, that this child is a special child. This, this child is going to inherit the, 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 the kingdom of his father David. And uh, so we know the story, the Christmas story is they sent out a tax and everybody has to go to their hometown. Well, he was born, Joseph was born in Bethlehem. It's the city of David, so he has to go back there to be numbered, to be counted and pay taxes. And he takes Mary with him. And the Bible says she's great with child. While she's there, she gives birth. Now, you know, we, we put up the representation of a barn, but most likely Jesus was born in a cave. He had a very lowly birth. Now, if we had been planning this, we'd have had him born in the king's castle. We'd had the wise men come and bring gifts, and, uh, boy, we would have honored Jesus, but that's not what God chose to do. God chose to have his son to have the lowliest of birth. You know, we celebrate Mother's Day today. But, you know, there's a controversy that's raging in our, in our nation about abortion, about aborting children. My wife said she saw someone, uh, they interviewed this lady, had 21 abortions. 21 children that she aborted because she didn't want to be a mother. Now, I know that being a mother is a full-time job, especially when children are, are little. You know, little Lyric, she crawls everywhere. I said, well, it's good she's crawling because when she walked, she's going to be into everything. She already is because children have a curiosity. Now, we live back in the days of cloth divers, thank you the Lord for, for huggies. <laughs> but we, we, we lived in the day, and some of you did too, in the days of cloth diapers. And you, you know, you had to wash those things, and it was a, it was a mess. And, uh, you know, thank God that we have huggies today. Well, she, she didn't have huggies. And, and so Jesus lived a life like everybody else. He's, he is as much a human being as he is the Son of God. Because God designed him to come into this world to take the throne of David and to deliver us from our sins. When God made a covenant with Abraham, he said, through you all nations or all people will be blessed. That means that everybody that's born on planet Earth, regardless of where you're born, you can receive Jesus Christ. You can be a part of His kingdom. Uh, that because of what she was doing. Now, you know, I, I don't think that she really thought that through. She said, well, according to your faith, be it unto me. And, and the angel departed. And really the adventure begins because her life will never be the same because she is agreed by faith. You know, when you agree and you live by faith, 
you, you, you're on an adventure of faith. And uh, so, you know, very, very early on, you know, they, they present the baby after eight days. They're devout Jews. And so they present this baby. And when they're in the temple, they encounter a devout man by the name of Simon. Now, now Simon had to talk to the Lord and God said, you won't die before you see the Messiah. And he's in the temple and he sees Joseph and Mary bringing the baby in. And God said, that's the Messiah. And, and he is rejoicing. You know, God, I can die in peace now because I have seen the deliverance of Israel. But he has a prophecy and he prophesies to, to Mary. I want to read this prophecy if I can find it. In my notes. And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. When she agreed to, to, to conceive Jesus in her womb and to give birth to him, Eight days later, she understands or she begins to understand the, the full cost of what it's going to be. And, and she, she suffered because of what happened to the Lord. Now, like parents, uh, you know, the wise men showed up two years later. They bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, and the king is going to kill all the babies. And, and Joseph has a dream. And the Lord said, take him down to Egypt. And he's obedient to the Lord. And he goes to Egypt. And it fulfills the scripture because God says, out of Egypt I have called my son. There are over 225 prophecies about the Lord Jesus Christ. And every one of them, Jesus fulfilled. Every one of them. Everything that's said about Jesus in the Word of God, Jesus fulfills all of us. There's no mistaking that He is the Messiah. He is the one that was come. Because they had looked for years and years and years. They, they were awaiting the Messiah. And when He came, He wasn't exactly what the ruling class wanted. He wasn't what they wanted. Because they wanted a king to rise up and overthrow the Roman rule. And he's going to rise up and he's going to overthrow the rule of, of, the, of the devil and his cohorts, but that's in the future. He came as a tender plant. He came to minister. He came to, to bless the people and be a blessing, but he came for one purpose, to die for our sins. Jesus... Mary gave birth to the one that was going to redeem us from our sin. And I don't know that she fully understand at first what, what her decision was and, and when she gave birth to this child. Now she had other, uh, other sons and daughters who were born and uh, you know they probably didn't believe who Jesus was but she, she knew the things that had happened. She knew about this visit that the angel had. She, she knew about going down to Egypt. Joseph said, I've been warned by God in a dream that we've got to go to Egypt. And so they traveled to Egypt. And it wasn't an easy journey. And, you know, they couldn't get in a car. They couldn't get in a plane. They, they had to walk to Egypt. He had to find something to do in Egypt. And then God reveals to him later on that you can go back to your hometown because the one that was after the child is dead. And so he goes back to Nazareth. And, uh, you know, life goes on. You know, Joseph dies at point, uh, some point in time. You know, if Jesus had all this power, Joseph would not have died. He'd raised him from the dead. But you see, he, he was just a man like we are. 
until he was anointed of the Holy Spirit and began his ministry. I mean, he loved Joseph. He would have, you know, we all care about our father. You know, he wouldn't have wanted his father to die prematurely. He would have raised him up if he had the power to do it, but he couldn't do it because he wasn't yet anointed of the Holy Spirit. And, and, you know, there's a lot about the life of Jesus. When Jesus is about 12 years old, they lose Jesus. You ever been in a mall or someplace and, and you look around for your kid and they're not there? Your heart begins to race. Well, they thought Jesus was with some of the family members and they traveled for a day. They have been in Jerusalem for, for the feast that required and to present them to do the Passover. They went, and so they're going home. And after a day, they, they, they're looking for Jesus. He's somewhere, where's Jesus at? And they can't find him. And so they travel back to the city. And for three days, they're trying to find him. And the last place to look is in the temple, and he's sitting among the doctors of the law, listening to their, their questions and their answers and asking them questions. And they're having a hard time, and they were amazed at his level of understanding. They couldn't understand, you know, isn't he from Nazareth? You know, who taught this kid the law? Well, it's because God put Jesus in the right home to receive training. Joseph and Mary taught Jesus the Jewish traditions. But Jesus had a different understanding of those things. You know, there's 18 years that we find that are missing in the life of Jesus. In fact, more like 30 years that we don't know what Jesus did. We know that he was a carpenter. Now, they didn't build houses like we build houses today. Most likely he was a wood carver. He made spoons and tables and chairs. That's what he did for a living. And his father taught him how to do all that. But Jesus spent his time in the Word. He understood that he was different. Mary had to tell him that an angel came and, and said, you're going to be born and you're going to inherit the, 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 the kingdom of, of David, the great king. And Jesus begins to research the scripture. And, and he, he learns about who he is and what his purpose is because the Holy Spirit is teaching him. The greatest teacher of all, the Holy Spirit is teaching Jesus who he is. And all that starts because Mary is willing to allow the Holy Spirit to use her. You know, we have to determine, have we got enough faith in God that we'll allow God to use us? God to direct our steps and God to lead us to do things that sometimes they, they seem impossible? How impossible it seem for her to conceive a child by the Holy Spirit? But see, she lived her life as a servant of God. We live our life as a servant of God. Whatever he tells us to do, we do it without reservation. See, God doesn't want you to argue with him when he tells you to do something. You know, Jesus encountered a man one day at the pool of Siloam. And he said, will you be healed? And he goes through this rendition, well, I don't have anybody to take me down and, you know, everybody beats me and the water's trouble and they get healed. That wasn't what Jesus said. Jesus said, will you be healed? And, and you know, sometimes we go through a rendition, we tell God 99 reasons why we can't do this. Well, God would not have asked us if he didn't know that through him we will be able to do it. Now, Moses was trained as an Egyptian. And God separated him and put him in the house of Pharaoh. Why? Because he would have learned how to gather straw for bricks and he made bricks and he would have constructed, that's all his life would have been. He would have been a servant. But God put him in a place that he would not have a servant's mentality. 
He's in a place of leadership. History tells us that, that he was a, a military uh, man, that, that they had the mightiest military, and, and so he's leading the military. He learns about military. Why? Because God's preparing him to lead the children of Israel out of captivity. But see, he has to be anointed. It's, it's not his natural ability that's going to deliver the people. It's God. Moses is just the messenger. And, and Moses kills somebody, he runs for his life, and he's on the backside of the desert when he sees a burning bush. It's the presence of God. And he goes to investigate, and God says, take your shoes off. You're standing on holy ground. Why? Because where the presence of the Lord is, it's a holy place. Sometime after Mary said, according to your word, be it unto me, the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and she conceived the Lord Jesus Christ. And she gave birth to the Son of God. And God used him in all his life experiences to change our life to change us from the vile creature we were. Well, you might say, well, I've never done anything all that bad. We were lost and without hope till Jesus came. You could have stuck your nose in a corner and lived your whole life and never done anything that we would say wrong, but you were out because you were born under the curse of sin. Somebody told Mark that, that uh, sin is a learned experience. You, you, you know, it, it, somebody learns that. And if you don't learn it, you're not a sinner. Well, that's not true. The Bible says we've all sinned, come short of the glory of God. Right. Was Mary a sinner? Yes, she was. She was just, just as lost. She gave birth to the Savior. She witnessed his death, as cruel as it was. You can only imagine the feelings that she had when she saw her son beaten and nailed to a cross. And, uh, you know, it was a horrendous scene. Now, Jesus cared for her. He looked at John. He said, behold, your mother. He's taking care of her from the cross. He, he does what a good son will do. Make sure that his mother's taken care of. And, and Jesus dies. That's not the end of the story because on the third day, he's alive. And the good news is Mary is in the upper room waiting for the promise of the Father. She realized he's the Messiah. He was and is the Messiah. He is the Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's that today. Now we honor our mother. Thank goodness for mothers. We wouldn't be here if we did not have a mother. And thank God that this little maid from nowhere said, according to your word, be it unto me. And, 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 and the whole world is changed because of her decision. Now, God would have found somebody else. You should know God would have found somebody to bring forth his son. We're so thankful that Mary decided to be the person that would usher in Jesus that would ultimately save us for our sins. Today we're about 2,000 years after the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, awaiting his return. And we see the world, the world, oh man, the world is messed up. There's conflicts all over the globe. There, there are people that, that, that are dying every day. Thousands of people die every day. They're, they're lost and without hope. It is our responsibility as a child of God to share the good news of Jesus Christ with as many people as we can before the Lord comes. He's coming very soon. The Bible says the day is far spent, the night comes when no man can work. Why? Because we're going to be out of here. Soon and very soon, we're going to be in heaven. Now that's going to be a shock to your system. One minute you're going to be here and the next minute you're going to be in heaven. Because the Bible says in a moment and in a twinkling eye we will be in the presence of the Lord. 
That's, that's amazing. That's, that's, that's in our future. But while we're here, we have the responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everybody. You know, I'm thankful that I had a Christian mother. And my earliest memories of mother is my mother, every night we pray. My mother read the Bible. Some of you had the same experience. My dad was a minister. My grandfather was a minister. I was raised in a Christian home. But you know, everybody did, did not have that opportunity. Some people were raised in a non-Christian home. Thank God that they received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Some of them had a rough life. Their life was rough and rocky until they received Jesus. And, and, and everything changed. Everything about their life changes. When we encounter Jesus, everything changes because we become a part of his kingdom. And it's all because a little maid said, according to your word, be it unto me. God may ask you to do something. You need to be the same way. Whatever you say, I will do. I will be obedient to your word. Why don't you stand on your feet and we're going to pray. You know, every week we, we close the service because this goes out on YouTube. And there's no telling who will uh, pick this up. You know, the people in heaven, you go on YouTube and you can look their name up and, and you can hear messages they preached years ago. Brother T.L. Osborne, who was a mighty missionary, uh, he's on YouTube. You, you, you can look him up. There's folks that they're on YouTube that they're not even here anymore, but their words are still here. What we do today can have a, 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 a future experience. People can experience God. You don't know what people thumbing through the YouTube channel will run across and, and say, hmm, let me see what that is. So when we confess Jesus... See, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now I know we pray this prayer every week. And you say, well, I'm saved. That's good, but there are hundreds and thousands and millions of people that are not. There are people that don't know the name of Jesus. People that live in remote parts of the world. They don't know Jesus if he came the first time. So let us let's pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come in the mighty name of Jesus. And you said, if I would confess Jesus and believe from my spirit that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. Lord, I do that. I do that. I have faith in your word that I am saved, that I'm on my way to heaven, but I don't want to go alone. Help me to lead others to Jesus Christ. I ask it in your name and for your glory. Amen.